Ready to go home, kiddo? Ready. Aren't you supposed to be watching, TK? Didn't want to miss the rescue. Don't worry. He's out cold. Hey, looks like they're coming over the bridge. We're at the first checkpoint. Raise the bridge. to daddy, sweethearts. Nice shot, sir. Have at it, boys! just happened zombies can't take out a military column they can't can they regular zombies can't but those what happened to them look it's Rebecca what is she thinking I've got to go get her no daddy didn't you see that was the military rescue how the hell do we get out of here now we're gonna have to go out there 
find a way out ourselves. Now, everybody, wait a minute. There's another part to standard operating procedure. My understanding is if there's a problem with the rescue operation, there'll be another attempt in 24 hours, if it looks like there's any survivors. What do you mean, your understanding? You knew plenty about standard operating procedure before. Hey, hold on, Missy. Wasn't supposed to happen like this. I'm the only reserve man who made it here alive. And I'm doing my damnedest. And what if that rescue fails, huh? Everything else has gone wrong so far. Firebombing. It's the only way to get rid of them. For good. Firebombing? I have to go get Rebecca. Chuck, be careful. If those things can take out the military... Hello everybody and welcome back to Dead Rising 2. That situation escalated awfully quickly and... Seems like there's no rescue, so Chuck is gonna go out and be his own one-man army. And we need to go and save Rebecca. Perhaps she caught something on her video camera that we didn't see. And she might be of help to us. Sullivan said that another rescue team will be sent in in 24 hours. So there's not a whole lot we can do right now. We can just kind of hope and pray that uh, someone is coming to save us. At this point, you'll start to run into what are called gas zombies. They are incredibly fast. You can see them coming towards me here. They'll puke blood at you, which will stun you and uh, blind you. And they are also a lot tougher than normal zombies. One good thing about them is that a lot of them uh, will drop queens because they're a queen carrier zombie. They're kind of a special type zombie. So it's a good idea to pick up a lot of queens if you want to get rid of groups of zombies, because you still have to deal with the regular zombies on top of all this. Now, we have to get over towards the underground tunnels, which is over by the Yucatan. The reason I'm going this way is I can grab the motorcycle that's by the arena, and I can safely drive over to that location rather than walking just because there are so many deadly zombies about, and it's probably a little bit faster to do it that way. And keep in mind that even if you have a lot of queens, which is a good way to clear crowds, gas zombies are pretty much resistant to queens, and so you still want to have lots of uh, weapons in your inventory. And we will be running into a specialized gun when we get to the underground tunnels that is very, very effective against gas zombies, specifically, that you can use if you're having trouble. There's also an achievement to kill a thousand gas zombies, which I definitely wouldn't recommend doing without a vehicle, just because they're so tough, and so fast, and so very aggressive. This is definitely a new breed of zombie that we haven't seen before, and it's pretty terrifying, uh, because they're very dangerous. If there was ever any sort of zombie invasion that was infested with these type of gas zombies, I would be very worried. Survival would be very, very difficult, as opposed to the shambling, slow, kind of stupid zombies that we've been seeing for the most part. So again, I'm just gonna grab this bike and uh, ride it over. Now you can walk, but there's gonna be a lot of obstacles in your way. There's also uh, a lot of military vehicles scattered around, uh, abandoned, turned around on their fronts and blown up and all sorts of crazy stuff. There wasn't that many military men in the scene, but perhaps there were more coming on the way. Either way, those guys got slaughtered. It didn't really look like they were taking their job very seriously though at the beginning, and maybe that's why they got so overwhelmed so quickly, especially if they weren't expecting those types of zombies. 
And we're going to be getting into another psychopath battle, so if you need any supplies, now would be the time to get them. You can get food and... Man, that butt to the head looked like it would hurt a lot. Alright, so either way, this is our next psychopath. This is Sergeant Dwight Boykin, who was the leader of the group that came in for the rescue. And after seeing all of his men get completely slaughtered, he's kind of gone a little bit insane. So, he's more of an annoying boss. Not really difficult, in my opinion. He's just kind of fast and sporadic and um, a lot of his attacks will knock you down which I think is one of the worst things in my opinion. I hate being knocked down. When he butts you with his gun it'll knock you down and then he'll proceed to shoot you and he can also throw you. And if he throws you uh, he'll most likely try and shoot you from a distance. So you want to watch out for that. And he can also throw grenades at you I do believe if you're far enough away. So I don't necessarily have a strategy with this guy. I just bring a lot of healing items because I usually blow through quite a few dealing with him. Now luckily you don't have to deal with any of the gas zombies which is great. But uh, this guy's definitely a force to be reckoned with. Not one of the easier battles by any means. If you start spraying his gun like that just get cover. Luckily there is a lot of cover which is really really nice a lot of places to hide and it may be beneficial for you to try and do some sort of long-range attack or to kind of go in attack once and then get behind some cover so that he doesn't have the opportunity to grab you like that and throw you but I for the most part always use uh, close-range attacks that's just how I am I'm kind of up in your face Sometimes he'll take a moment to reload his gun, which is a good time to go in and hit him as well. I can't believe a worthless zombie did me in. Come on, we need to go. But you ain't gonna bite me. You ain't gonna turn me. I'll never be one of you. Move! Are you okay? <sighs> My leg's a little... We better get back to the bunker. Alright, so after defeating the sergeant, you need to bring Rebecca back to the safe house. And this is where the trouble so, uh, sort of comes in. She has injured her leg, and she will need to be carried. Now, if you have the leadership magazine, she should be able to walk on her own. And another really good thing about Rebecca is that she has a whopping 3,000 health, which is about as much as a psychopath has. 
So if you need to drop her for any reason, it's no big deal because she has a lot more survivability than regular survivors do. So what I would recommend is getting her into one of the golf carts and then what you can do if you don't have any of the other bigger vehicles unlocked is you can drive her through the maintenance tunnels up into the entrance to get to the Royal Flush Plaza and then you can take the tunnel back up towards the plaza which will take you right by the sports car and from there you can take her right to the safe house. But since I have the SUV I'm gonna take that instead. You can also take the golf cart up on the strip and try and drive it to the Royal Flush Plaza. The only problem with that is that this cart only has so much juice in it. It can only suffer so much damage and it will probably break halfway to the safe house. Whereas the SUV has a lot more durability. And the underground has a lot more space, so if you are driving that cart in the underground, it should be a little bit easier for you to get around. But I prefer taking this way. I find the underground is a little bit difficult to navigate and it's really, really, really long and, and kind of twisty. So I'm just going to rip through here. And on the way, we can pick up two survivors, Michael and Matthew. And if you're carrying any firearms at all whatsoever, you have to drop them or they will shoot you. And this includes water guns, I do believe. So any type of firearm in your inventory, you must drop them or they will shoot at you until you do. And then once you do drop your firearms, they will agree to come with you after a little bit of talking. If you stop shooting me, of course, jerk. And I do believe one of them is injured. Matthew, I guess, is injured. And a difficult thing about carrying uh, these guys, as well as Rebecca, is you have two injured survivors. And Matthew will not accept food items or anything like that. So he can be kind of difficult to escort back to the safe house. Which is kind of a pain. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer him a shoulder and let Rebecca walk. And all three of us are going to go back to the safe house together. These two are probably one of the more difficult ones to save if you don't have any sort of an advantage. If you don't have the leadership magazine, uh, you know, if you have to carry Rebecca, if you don't have the SUV, things like that. And then on top of that, if you get injured, or the survivor gets injured while you are carrying him, he won't accept health items, which can be really deadly, especially with all these gas zombies that are around. Off screen, I also went and purchased the sports car, just because I figured I might as well try and drive it around a little bit. If he'll let go of me? Are you gonna let go of me, buddy? No? Okay. Oh, there we go. I was gonna say, uh, can you let go of me so I can drive my car, please? That would be great. So if you use the sports car key, you can drive the sports car through the mall, and it's only a two-seater, so you can only have uh, one passenger with you, but it's kind of nice because you can drive it through hordes of zombies, and it makes a pretty nice, clear path for your, the remainder of your survivors to come through. It makes it a little bit safer for them. But it's not very durable. It's really fast, but kind of hard to control, in my opinion. And you can only take it as far as the food court, I do believe. You can take it through the Slot Ranch Casino. And you can take it through to the food court. But you can't take it outside. And if the doors to the safe house are open, you can ride this car all the way down to the safe house. So, it... It can go like a couple of places and it can be kind of useful, but it's not one of the more useful vehicles in my opinion. It's mostly for show, you know, or if you just feel like having a little bit of fun. I would definitely recommend having the leadership magazine for this part of the game. I think I mentioned that last video when we, when we were kind of preparing, but as you can see here, it's so much better 
moving these guys around when I don't have to worry about two injured survivors.